Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today I thought I'd do a video that's a little bit different. It is farmer's market time in the US and in Australia we are looking at our winter farmer's markets. But of course these projects are great um, for anyone in Australia coming up to our summer ones. So of course you need time to make them. And my husband has made these together so these are two separate ones we're going to join them and today I will show you exactly how we've done it so I've done a step-by-step -step, um, guide how my husband has actually made these for me um, I'm very fussy and I really do like a certain look and all it is is a couple chopping boards from your local um, Kmart or in America um, I'm sure that you know you have sort of like a cheap discount store like us um, I can't think of the name off by heart um, but anyway I know that you do have one but we in Australia call it Kmart and then all these are chopping boards and he's divided them in pieces and these top railings you can see here these are actually good old trusty um, front, uh, fence pails so um, which is really good or fencing as we call it in Australia so we've just basically um, done you know a bit of a display on what we wanted and then my husband's got to work making these and making them amazing so at the end of the day all we need to do is um you know literally put them together come up with a plan and then we can have something really gorgeous and these are going to be for my soap so these are actually my soap displays and i use the same color at the farmer's market and the great idea with these is because they're a darker wood it just doesn't show the dust as much as it would in white and so on so let's get going and we'll make this together and i'll show you exactly how i've done this whole process and then i'll come back at the end and we'll pop some soaps on so you can see what my display would look like anyway i hope this video is going to be amazingly helpful i'm super super excited with these i love them they are absolutely gorgeous and my husband Chris a big thank you he's done an amazing job anyway like I said I'll come back at the end and I will actually um, pop in some soap for you but I thought at the start of the video I'll show you the end product so you can see a bit of the end so then you'll see what we're going to make and how we're going to do it but you know if you're handy yourself or you have a handy person in your life you know dad husband friend uh, yourself maybe your even mum might be really amazingly helpful to do these so give this little project a go and we'll see how we go but let's get going and making it and I'll show you the whole process like I said let's go now to start this project you can see here these are the chopping boards that I started with they're like an acacia wood I think it's called and we just got these from Kmart I think they're about $15 uh, each so we got three of them because we're going to be dividing these um, into halves so then that will be um, obviously six pieces out of three and then of course the fence palings on the side and then they are going to make the base frame of this gorgeous product so so here you can see um, my husband starting to get everything ready and organizing it and just checking the saw to see that it's all good and then what he's actually got is um, this particular saw it just has like you know a little grid and then you just basically are going to zoom you know your saw over the grid which just holds it into place so that he can get a really nice cut straight down the middle of course he has measured everything um, so that everything goes perfect down the middle um, of these pieces of wood now the one thing that I have to say during this video now don't laugh everybody but I am no wood expert um, I'm just doing the voice over of the bits that my husband have done and hopefully I explain enough to everyone so that you can all have a go at um, making this but you know you might have a different way but this is just the way that my husband did this my husband is an electronics engineer so I think engineers always have ideas and different plans that sometimes I think are a bit more tricky than I would think but still he does an amazing job so let's get going and we will watch the next section so that we can see exactly how he's created this so he's cut them in half and you can see that these are the half pieces here so he's like I said just cut them directly in half and this is a real rustic kind of board so the main thing that we want to do here is make sure all of the ends are the exact same size so now that we've cut them in half my husband is just measuring the ends of each of them because he does think he needs to cut like about a mil or something of one to two millimeters off the end of some of them because he wants them to be exactly the same size and then that way they'll actually fit into um, sort of like the a-frame I guess that he is going to make which I call it a side a-frame it's probably not the technical term of course but 
anyway he's just going to like I said measure it up make sure they're all totally flushed at the end and they all are totally equal that way it just makes it easier when he's going to be creating um, the a-frame at the end of making um, these wood pieces so I'll just um, let my video roll so you can see exactly what he's doing and I'm sure that if you are more technical with wood than me you'll get the whole idea this is actually the saw that he's used, which is from my brother-in-law, Steve. He borrowed that from him. And um, this was Steve's one. We don't have this particular type. And um, yeah, anyway, and it was a great way to, you know, just put everything together and make it nice and easy. I mean, you could use, you know, your standard saw, but my husband just thought this would be much easier. And of course, we're doing it outside today because it's a beautiful day. Now, of course, um, please make sure you're doing all the safety. So um, my husband does have the safety glasses on. And of course, he does have the earmuffs on to protect his ears. So if you're doing something like that, please do use the right equipment and make sure you're using all the safety um, guides and rails that are on your saws and so on. So um, because um, it's really, really important, even if it's just a little basic project, it's still important. Although I won't say this was a basic project because it did take some time um, to do. And so here, all he's doing is um, cutting all of the extra bits and pieces just to make sure that they're all the right size. So with the, um, the A-frame that you can see on the um, side, it does have a particular angle on it, but it depends exactly how you want it to stand, whether you want it to stand sort of backwards, you know, how tall you want it and so on would depend on the um, amount of cuts that you're going to be doing to everything. But from here, like I said, we're just going to be cutting all the bits in half to start with. And that's the bit that we're doing here. And you can see they've come out really beautiful. And the rustic look just adds to that gorgeous look um, of this particular bit. And so what he's doing now that you can see here is he's just cutting off the tiny little bits I was talking about before, the tiny little uh, one mil or something, which you can see him chucking that to the side just to make sure it's looking really, really gorgeous. So he's got to do that to every single piece that we've got. And of course we have um, six halves because we had three chopping boards to start with. So he'll get going and um, cut all these little bits off. And then if there's any stickers at the back of the board, which there was because like I said, this was a chopping board, we just had to peel those off um, and make sure because this is rustic and it does have like a bit of a lip at the front, make sure the lip is facing the right way um, for your board you know what you want that to face the front and you want it to sort of face down a little bit so that nobody hurts themselves on anything if you have any of these clamps um, they can be really handy as well so my husband actually made just put like little bits of wood here and what he's actually doing is just creating like a stop level so that way he can push the board against and just snip off any ends or anything he needs to do he just thought that was an easier way than trying to measure and keep going of course it's been measured but it just makes it easier as well and then this particular um, wooden main piece you can see is like a jig he said that he's made up and he's just made that up to make it easier to just keep pushing um, the saw back and forward but you know you might actually have something um, like you know a saw that does that or you might have like a metal grid that you know you use at home or something like that but this is all we had um, we don't have a real fancy kit but you know I still know what I um, wanted to have and my husband wanted to give it a go even with our tools that we had but and um, I'm sure you can agree it's come out really beautiful so anyway I'll let you watch this little bit of making it all together and I'll come back in a moment
So all the pieces are being cut now and then they've all been leveled. So you can see here, my husband holding them, that they are all exactly the same size and um, they're looking really nice. They're nice and flat. There's no jagged edges as well. So make sure if there's any jagged ones just to saw them all down. But with this particular saw, it did do a really beautiful, clean job. And here you can see already. And now we're on to the next step of doing the next piece, of course. So these bits are the palings that we're going to be using and like I said they're going to be doing the side frames of them all so obviously for the side frames you know you need one on either side so you're going to need um, two small bits on each pet on each uh, rack and then of course you know two long bits on each rack but if you're going to just do one of course you don't need as many um, for this and I think this project all up cost us about $45 with the boards and then I think we paid about $6 per um, fence plank as well. And I think we had like five fence planks. So it wasn't too expensive. If I was to actually buy these boards, that'd be a couple hundred dollars to buy these racks, I mean. So yeah, it's so, so much cheaper to do it yourself if you can. Uh, my husband's pretty clever. So I'm really, really lucky that he's done that. So yeah, he's just showing how he's going to make it on an angle here. And so we'll just cut all the pieces to the right arm um, size and then uh, later on we're going to do all the next bits which will be making the holes to drill them all up and um, of course gluing some bits in but I'll show you all that bit in a moment after he gets um, fixing the last bits and cutting them all up. Right, so he's actually done all of the angles now that are going on the side so we're just using some PVA or some wood glue and all we're going to be doing is just doing a little bit of glue down the side and then we're going to clamp it all together just to make sure that um, the, it sticks together before we put in the screws it just helps a little bit more rather than just adding the screws in later so you'll see how we're just going to be adding and doing these joins together which they worked out really nice as well. So hopefully you can see exactly what we're doing. And then this is going to be the side. So like we said, you do need to have two sides, obviously one on each side um, of each rack, but we've been making two racks. So we need to make four of these so that we can create the two racks, finish them off and make them look amazing. And then that way my display at my markets will be totally finished and I won't need any more products now made. So also once he's um, glued it in, then he's just going to screw it in place. He'd already like pre-drilled little holes in. So then the screws just went in as you can see here. And then later on, we'll actually be popping them in place, um, making them, you know, exactly perfect. We'll just rub that little bit of glue off. It will dry clean anyway. So we don't need to worry about that. And um, yeah, and so once it's all done, like I said, we, you know, we'll just make sure that all the screws are totally drilled in so that they're not going to be rough around the edges or anything like that. And you can see the little um, the little bits that he's drilled into the side as well to make sure that everyone's everything slots in and looks perfect. As I said again, um, I am no wood expert. I'm just doing the voiceover as um, I make it. And I like to keep it as real as I can and, you know, more realistic so that hopefully somebody else can make this as well because really um, the whole concept of it is not that hard. It's just making sure the measurements are all done perfectly and you know exactly what you're doing and got it all ready um, but anyway like I said my husband is so clever I'm really proud of him he did an amazing job um, and he listened to me nagging him the whole time and telling him exactly how I wanted it to be but anyway I'll let you listen and watch the last bit without me talking the whole time and I'm sure that you'll be able to see how it all comes together and it's looking amazing So all 
all he's going to be doing here is he's actually going to just be literally popping in these little holes so he knows exactly where he's going to be drilling in later on so this is you know a bit of a boring task for him to do but like he said it will make it easy later on and then these will be the two angles and we'll pop them all together and they will look amazing so we're on to the next bit very soon So this bit that he's doing here is actually a really important bit. I decided that I actually wanted like some fall shelves on the back, which is basically just a little bit of a backing on the shelf. So you know when people grab something at the market and sometimes the soap just falls off, which is really annoying. This way it'll be so much easier. They can grab the soap and it's not going to fall off. It would just literally push the soap to the back a little bit. So anyway, these were a really great idea. And then of course we're going to just drill these straight in to the main piece of wood that you can see here, which is our main bottom shelf. And then that will be um, amazing because that will just sit perfectly on the side angle. So there's gonna be three of these in total. And then like I said, they will actually go to the side frames that we're making. So number one is totally finished how amazing does this look i really really love it it is quite heavy because it is an acacia wood but i don't mind about that it won't blow over in the wind which is even better so on to the next one and i'll get him to do the next one and we'll keep it um, going so that we can totally finish it all off and i just thought i'd bring this bit of footage for you so that you can see this little bit that we're doing and as you can see we're in our backyard um, with our little doggies in the background so you can get a little look at them and their name is Ivy and Peaches so um, we'll keep going like I said for this little bit here and it won't be long before this whole thing's finished and then at the end of the video I will show you um, me stacking up all of the soap on the shelves and looking amazing
Brenda here, I'm back again. So I thought what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how I'm gonna set up my display. We're at the end of the day, well actually it's evening, it's nine o'clock at night now. These did take quite a few hours to do, but only because my husband is super precise. So anyway, we'll get going and I'll show you exactly how I set it up. I do use props like this as well. These are just basically um, a cheap little um, sort of ceramic -y type coral. So I put them in because a lot of um, the markets that I do are around the bay. In Australia, we do have a lot of bay products. So all I'm gonna be doing is popping these on here. And you might have all different ones. Still haven't got the tag on this one. I usually just leave them on anyway. I don't sell them. Um, they are simply for my display. But let's get going and I'll show you exactly how I actually do my display. So usually I literally just try and keep them into, um, you know, like little layers here, as you can see here. If you've got less, just bring them to the front. And try and keep, you know, your similar colours um, here as well. And honestly, it's really, really easy. So obviously this one's kind of like, if you have things that are on the bay, do bay ones as well. You know, if you had like more of a child kind of section, put your child ones together as well. And you know, you can even do one like this and one like this, so it's nice and easy as well. But for me, I usually like to just, um, you know, put one behind, one in front. And then I would literally have this piece here just to sit in the middle. These are just some soaps I had, so you might have all different types of soap. And um, once again, put one back, and then we'll just push this one forward a little bit. And you know, you might just pop them all in a line. Just make sure that if you have two like this, the colors are similar. I wouldn't keep those together. I kind of move these ones a little bit um, further apart. If it's like a beach one, you can. If you think they're gonna fall, you can do that. But that's why my husband's made this little bit on the shelf as well, so that we can just, you know, kind of keep it all here. But, you know, and then of course we'll put them all in a row. So we'll just pretend they're similar and put them over that side. I didn't get enough, did I? Because the rack's quite big now. And so, yeah, and so literally you're just going to keep going with these and then popping something on the top. If you have ice cream ones or something, which I'll grab some, then you can pop those on. You know, if, you, if this was your only stand as well, you could actually do something, you know, a little bit different um, with your stand. So you literally could be adding, you know, like lip glosses, candles, anything. And do remember, like my last video, keep them on lines. On a, so this one's going to be on an angle. These ones are front on. And that way it just adds a point of difference because you don't want them all the same. It'll be really, really boring. If you have gaps, anything like this, just pop it into your gap. So um, if you sort of go, oh my God, I've run out, what do I do? Pop that in or literally take one of these away put it at the front and then you might pop that one there or so on. So if you think, well, I just don't have one, you know, what do I do? And if you have samples as well, put that one at the front so then they can smell that one and then they go, oh yeah, I love it, you know, what can I do kind of thing. So anyway, that, that's my suggestion to, to do that particular bit. And you know, just make sure that they're all looking really beautiful together. And then I'll just put the ice cream ones here and I'll just keep going so that you can see exactly what I'm gonna do. And then hopefully, um, you know, you can sort of bring all of your own style together. So I'll keep going and um, hopefully you can see exactly what I'm doing. Thank you. 
Facebook. Alright, they're looking fantastic. So I'm just going to bring you closer and I'll show you exactly what I've done. But they look really, really beautiful and I'm sure that you'll agree. They also look just so nice. And the one thing about this rack as well is on the bottom here, um, it's really rustic. So it kind of like curves around and that gives a real point of difference as well. If it was really straight, it wouldn't look as um, amazing. But yeah, so these are um, a really good size as well. So they're maybe about half a meter in height. And then um, because they have these backboards as well, the soap's not going to flip off the back no matter what somebody does. So, but look how cute they look. And like I said, you know, if you had more of these or you want to leave gaps, you could pop them in the middle as well. But for this little um, experiment, I'll show you exactly what I've done. And let me bring the uh, camera closer and you can see what we've done. If you love what we've done today and you think it's amazing and definitely worth a thumbs up, please give me a thumbs up. That really does help my channel and make sure you subscribe and pop on the notification bell because that really does help our little channel. Anyway, thanks for listening. Time for me to go to bed. It is after 9 p.m. in the evening, hence why the lights are a little bit darker at the moment. But I will see you again in a few days time when my next video comes up. Have an amazing day and make sure you do something so, so lovely for somebody else, you know. Bye for now.